This is a Raider-controlled one-winged copter with only one electric motor. So let's jump right into the video and see how it works. All right, previously we made a 3D printed electric boomerang, which is basically three wings with a motor attached to each one of the wings. Now, what would happen if you cut off two out of the three wings? So it would just be one wing with one motor attached to it. How could that possibly fly? Well, it's actually called a mono wing. So I sketched up sections of a fully 3D printable wing and here are all the parts. Now we just need to put it all together, put a dowel through it for reinforcement and we'll add an electric motor and see if it flies. With lack of a better of an idea, I'm just gonna super glue each section to make the full wing, spray paint it, and that's it. I still have this section of the wooden dowel to add the motor. Super glue bonds extremely well to PLA, so great in fact that it's often stronger than the plastic itself. I glued the, the five pieces together with the rod already in place, hoping that it would catch some of the glue and stick to the PLA. I did some sanding and decided to paint it red as it's often so white that all the details would be washed out on video. Alright, that's a lot better. At this point though, I could sketch up a 3D printable mount for the motor, basically an adapter going from a round rod to a flat surface in order to mount the motor. As you can see in this shot, the wing was mostly hollow and I didn't think it would be too heavy. However, I still wanted to keep everything as light as possible. Super light wing, turned out really good. It's printed with lightweight PLA, about two parameters I think. And uh, I think the spray paint weighs just about, it weighs about as much as the plastic itself. All right, so the next step is to mount the motor. I've 3D printed a motor mount that goes on this wooden dowel that will later go... What the f My English today. It will go through the entire wing. We can adjust the length. We'll use a tiny four cell battery and a massive brushless motor. I don't see how this could go wrong. There's a bunch of things on the EEC, the motor and the battery that we don't need. So I'm just gonna cut them off. I'm just guessing it won't overheat. Looks like we lost 20 grams. That's cool. You're gonna wanna check this out. These are the four components. One motor with a 3D printed mount that goes on the end of the wooden dowel. Before we put that motor on though, I've 3D printed a customized mount for the speed controller, as well as the receiver and the battery. It's really just a mounting system for all the components. The cables on the speed controllers are just way too long, so I'm gonna cut them off and replace them with even thinner cable, and it's just gonna make it easier to route the cables through the motor mount and make it more streamlined. For soldering this thin wire, I almost always use this kind of setup. It's just a three cell LiPo and a soldering pen. For this kind of thin wire, why would you use anything else? So the main reason for using such a big speed controller is so that I don't have to route a BEC to the receiver. This one has an integrated BEC, which gives five volts to the receiver. Perfect. Oh well, I did this in the reverse order. I should have soldered the wires from the motor first, because now we have to try and get these through the motor mount. And, uh, oh, that actually went a lot easier than I expected. I'm not gonna bother with connectors when I have a 50-50 shot to get this right. God damn, I put it on the wrong channel. On the receiver output, I think I had it on the elevator instead of the throttle. And it even spins the right way. It pays off to gamble. This next step should be pretty straightforward. We'll begin with the receiver. Once we glue this in place, this can't be undone. I blame the design department. We'll put the antennas in here. Perfect. And there we have it. That seems to be just the spot. That's the center of gravity. So that's where we'll put the bearing that will hold it in place when it spins up. It'll make more sense in just a minute. 
All right, metal rod, a 3D printed cheap ass bearing. And you just simply take the rod and hold it up just like this. And because it's at the center of gravity, it won't tip any other way. I didn't have the battery on while I was doing the center of gravity testing. So now I have to move it and repaint the damaged PLA. Oh well, we're ready to test it for the very first time, hoping it won't explode. Now what I did here is I angled the motor slightly. I think you can see that. The motor is angled upwards. I'm thinking it's gonna help to keep the angle of attack higher on the wing, which is gonna make it go up as it rotates. Facts. I remember that being scary with this kind of boomerang. Now this, this is gonna decapitate you. That's 10% throttle. The good thing is I can really feel the air pushing down to me. I heard a sound and that wasn't good. It's because this bearing that I made, Jesus, didn't Swedes invent the bearing? I 3D printed mine and it was too small so I had to drill it and that's why it's all crooked. So I fixed it and was able to try it out on the field for the very first time. Okay, as you know, for the past year, I've sent numerous files to PCBWay in order to be either CNC'd or metal 3D printed. All you do is upload your file and it will provide you with a plethora of options in regards to materials to choose from. PCBWay also offers PCB manufacturing and with their instant quote feature, you'll get the pricing up front. My experience is that you'll have your new part just a week after placing the order, so check them out in the description below. Okay. Back to the video. Batteri flög av. Jag kom på den nu, jag satt den inte riktigt fast det. Fan. Det ser bra ut. Yay. Ja, det var en nybörjare misstag. Eller så var det bara ett vanligt Simon misstag det. Samma sak. Den vill kanske lyfta, men jag tror inte den riktigt kommer loss. Hur löser man det? Kanske allt som behövs är lite fett. Det här för övrigt är samma kolfiberrör som jag hade i en av mina båtar. The outputs on the 4-in-1 EC failed. Everything was looking pretty good at this point. However, now the adapter was a little too short, which I could fix quite quickly by adding a second one on top of the original. Nu testar vi det. Kom igen då. Känns bra! Även ett misslyckande är bra. The good thing is that I'm pretty sure I know how to fix it. If we analyze the footage, you can tell, almost like an RC airplane, the wing is tail heavy and instantly loops. Now, I managed to find this video of a guy that made a functioning mono wing and it works just flawlessly. From that video, I found this website that tells you exactly how to build it. And I instantly saw my crucial mistake. I missed a stick, a stick perpendicular to the wing with a weight on the end of it to offset the center of gravity. Now, there's even a pretty good drawing of the wing, the motor arm and the motor with a stick perpendicular to the wing and a piece of clay to offset the center of gravity beyond the leading edge of the wing. Check this out, it tells you everything. I can't believe I missed it. There is a secondary wing acting as a stabilizer much smaller than the original main wing, but there it is, clear as day. However, our main guy Charlie doesn't seem to be using one. He's only using the weight offset to put the center of gravity and the center of rotation to accordance of this uh, drawing. So I guess that's what we're gonna do as well. That's a good start. Well, sometimes you just miss the most obvious things and I can't believe I missed it. Some might say it's even equally important as the perpendicular stick to offset the center of gravity, but the motor was facing the wrong way. As you can see, when the motor is pulling forward, if I rotate the wing, you can see the trailing edge of the wing is slicing through the air. 
and that's obviously not correct. So if we go ahead and just rotate the motor 180 degrees, now you can see it's pulling this way and you will see the leading edge of the wing is slicing through the air and that's correct. So, okay, to begin with, I want to move the center of gravity from here all the way here. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the CG at that point, but now this part is so long, so we might have to upgrade this to a carbon fiber tube or something like that. But obviously I'm gonna test it and see if it breaks. I used this wrench to find the optimal length to weight ratio of the brass tube in order to get the CG in front of the leading edge. I heated it up and simply melted it into the wing. I then added nuts equal to the weight of the wrench. And here I'm trying out the new upgrades. I almost immediately could tell that it was just too heavy, but it was clearly working a lot better than before. Though it broke at multiple points and I had to start all over. So I got this white Depron foam, which is typically made for radar controlled airplanes and I built a wing with the same Clark Y airfoil as the 3D printed wing. I had done this a few times before and as always it turned out like sh I gave it a quick paint job and here's the difference. 352 grams, that's nuts. The new wing, 54. <laughs> All right, a few changes coming up. I'm swapping out the larger motor to this, to this much more tiny motor. This small lithium polymer battery can supply all the power that this motor requires. So we're not getting everything out of this motor anyways. But now I can't get the center of gravity to go enough in this direction. So I move the battery closer to the wing. Also the smaller motor with less weight should help moving the center of gravity to this direction. Ready to try the new redesigned wing out of foam, new motor, it's much more well balanced. So let's cross our fingers and hope that it works. Doing all this in one shot. Here we go. Now that worked, I was just stupid enough to do it inside. The next day it was windy enough to do this. Yes! Jag ville bara komma över regeln som ligger där. <laughs> aj, aj, aj. Ja, det, det här med limma bara. Maximal otur. Ja, ja visst. Jag kunde inte landa utanför gräset eller gruset bara. Det... Nej, inte det. Men det såg bra ut. Ja, den är ju inte så landningsvänlig. Speciellt Nej. när den slungas lite diagonalt så här va. Mm. Vad som än händer till slut kommer den ju att slå av sin gren här. Men vi går hem och limmar den snabbt. Eventually I started to get the hang of it and I could even semi control the direction that it would take. Here I tried to make an intro for the video but it was just way faster than I expected. The battery was getting low and it wouldn't quite sustain flight at this point like it did before. Jävla <laughs> miserabelt. <laughs> miserabelt avslut. <laughs> Okay, nu, nu, nu packar vi ihop det <laughs> fiaskot. It still blows my mind that the concept of a one-winged copter actually worked. I hope some of you were surprised as well. And please give a thumbs up for the video. That's really the best way to support my mental stability. Two things before you leave the video. Sorry for the bad translation. Translating from Swedish into English, maybe I just suck at it. I just feel like I missed the tone of what I was trying to say most of the time. So sorry about the translation. That could definitely be improved. Second thing, I'm looking for a company that can do a 3D printed boat about this big. If you're located in Sweden and can do large 3D prints, hit me up on this email. See you again soon.
Bye, guys.